again, I'm Henry T. and welcome to the show that spells out inspiration in so many ways. We have a variety of stories that inspire you. They inspire me. We all, we all get inspired all together. Today, we take it a notch higher in inspiration. Today, we have a state championship coach in here who's become a very close friend. I've observed him as a friend, as a coach, as a teacher, as an inspiration to a whole town that we know and love as Española, New Mexico. And Coach Richard Martinez and his Sun Devils are fresh, only a few days off, coming off a state high school basketball championship that was played in the pit. And oh my goodness, were our hearts going like this. And I'm sure his is still doing that. And we got a lot to talk about today, so let's get started. Coach Martinez, what a pleasure to have you in studio today. It's an honor, Henry T., and you are the one that has the, the inspiration. I'm just showing up, but you're the inspiration for all of us. Thank you, Henry T. Wow. I followed your career closely for several years. And of course, in 2011, you won a state championship with Espanola Sun Devils. Before that, at Mora High School, you had another state championship. In, in 95. Wow. What is your formula of winning state championships? And I guess what I'm asking you, how do you teach, inspire, and organize, and coach young kids to go to that level to get all the mileage out of them like you do? <laughs> What's your formula? I, I think, Henry T., is that uh, as we're born, I think that God gives us our own path. And I was fortunate enough to find the right path in my life. I think that I worked under very good coaches. I worked under Victor Perez, and I worked under, under Lenny Royball and, and Gallegos up in Mora. In Mora. And then um, I grew up being a basketball junkie, loving the game. My father and my brothers, it was, back then we were fortunate. We didn't have the ability of saying, hey, we're going to be on our cell phone. We're going to be on our radio and TV. We had none of that. So uh, we came out of Coyote, a real small community up in the north. And there wasn't any of that. And I think the luxury we had that every day, the only thing we knew how to do was play ball. So at a very young age, I remember my father, uh, we were playing with a milk crate in our, in our house, and that's the way we played basketball, coach. My younger brothers and my father used to love to see us play. Uh, my older brother was three years older, and my younger brother, I'm sorry, two years older, and my younger brother was two years younger. So I was, I was a middle child. But I'll tell you one thing that my father, every day we played ball, and then I had to three or four uh, older siblings. I, I come from a family of seven brothers and sisters, and then um, my mom and dad made nine, and there's six of us left. But I think that's where it came from. I think as, as I grew up and I started loving the game and the passion, and back then it wasn't like... The beauty back then is that everything was focused on the game. You know how to really play the game. And now there's so much distraction. You, you see the phones, you, TV, uh, cars. There, there's so much for kids now. Back then, we didn't have that. So the sole love was the game of basketball. Fundamentally, mom and dad, they loved their children. They inspired you with special words and actions of their own, and you followed their words and their actions. How did they literally inspire Richard Martinez? And they told you in whatever way that you were going to be successful someday. I'll tell you, Henry T., that... Our, ho our house ha always had a lot of love. Uh, my father, I lost him three years ago at the age of 93, and I lost my mother at uh, Thanksgiving Day of this year. And let me tell you, um, when I lost my father, it was hard, but when I lost my mother, it seemed like they had taken my heart, man. I, I, I was broken. I, I had never been broken in my life. But I'll tell you, what they left, my family and the wealth, they we're such a united family. And I lost my older brother about 22 years ago, uh, bone, bone marrow. He had like a cancer. But I'll tell you, all the dichos and all the sayings and, and all everything that they gave us. And, you know, we didn't have like, like now my kids have everything. They don't, I remember my mom giving us gifts for Christmas and all she would do was put some shirts underneath the, the tree. We didn't have the luxury of gifts and all this money. I remember she'd give us maybe five, ten dollars to, because we didn't have that kind of money, you know. And, it, it didn't, our birthdays would come and go. There wasn't, you know, she'd just say, happy birthday, I love you guys. It wasn't, well, there were seven children. My father was the only one working, and I came from a family like that. But I was, I've never been caught up. Like, even when, now that I'm married, my wife tells me, 
well, all these treasures, you know, that want to have my, give my kids everything they want. And I tell her, well, we, I didn't, we didn't come out bad. But nowadays, everybody wants, and there's one thing that they got to have in our parents. They gave us great memories, and they gave us a lot of love. And I'll tell you, uh, they guided us in a very different way. You know, they said, you know, pay now. My father used to say, well, pay now or pay later. But everybody pays, you know. I didn't say that in Spanish. <laughs> paga ahora o paga después. But you're going to pay. And then he would tell me, like, sometimes he'd say, uh, like, after we'd win a game, he goes, e I would congratulate you. My father, my brother says it a lot better, but, and then uh, he always used to say, like, whenever we would tell him about the game, the, the greatest words he always used to say, De veras? You know, so things like this, and my mom uh, sitting, uh, the last 18 years, my mom was on a wheelchair, but I wish I would have recorded all the saying she had and the singing, and it, it just, it just put everything together, and, and to the very end, like, I see families now, and my family, there wasn't a day that my mom and dad weren't visited by her, their children. Whether they were here or there, they were always there. Whether it was a phone call away or us being there. Even when I went home, my father's lived with me to the very end of my mother. Uh, my, my wife always used to tell me, how come you always go into their house and not into mine, you know? <laughs> I love my mom, you know? <laughs> so. Back then, you had a, a love for the game of basketball. You were a star at McCurdy High School. You had a passion for the game. You played with great passion. Now today you coach with that same passion or even more. <laughs> that competitive nature, did it come from playing against your brothers? That's where it came from. That's where it came. Let me tell you, when we were growing up uh, uh, with me, my brother, and, and Erica, my, my younger brother Arnold was very smart in school, very smart. Eric was, was smart too. I think it might be, I was the one that wasn't very, I didn't like school very much. Uh, I liked basketball. I went to school to play basketball. You know, uh, my younger brother, he was a little bit more timid, but now I think he's the man of the house because he's pretty tough. He grew up to be, you know, he always trying to protect me. And then, of course, I've always had my older brother with me, alongside with me. And, and my brother, Robert, that's not, uh, that's on the background. He's the one that always makes sure that everything's taken care of. But as we were growing up, my oldest brother was, was about, I'd say he's about 20 and, and, and I'd be seven or eight. And then uh, my other brother was 18 and then Eric was eight or nine. And we'd always play two on two, very competitive. I mean, competitive where you would cry. I would cry and I was really upset. My brothers had to drag me out there to play. And my older brother would beat my my, my younger, my older brother, which was Robert, the second eldest. Uh, and it would become a war. And then it continued and my older brothers ended up leaving and, and then the younger brother stayed, which was Arnold, myself and Eric. And it was battles, I'll tell you. And, and it was back then, Arnold would stay out on the court for five, uh, 10 hours a day. I would stay on the court maybe four to six hours a day. My older, my older brother Eric was, didn't do that, but he'd stay three hours on the court. But all of them turned out. And you know, the funny thing is that I look back on all this and my father always, would always say that all his sons were probably the best players in the team during that time. And because my brother Eric was a great point guard. My brother Arnold played for the state championship in Pewaukee. Uh, I played for McCurdy. I was really ranked all year number one. And then my older brother was a great ball player. And my, my oldest brother was a great ball player. So I'll tell you, uh, if, if I would be my father, I think we gave him the blessings of life. He always used to say, I'm the most fortunate father in the world. I never understood why, but now I do. And he would be looking out the kitchen window into the backyard, <laughs> as you've described. And that's before. true. And that's true. That's absolutely true. They would look from the window, and it was it wasn't a window that you open. It was just, just a neat open bay window, and and we would play ball out there all day long. We had a small basket for the smaller kids, which were me, Eric, and Arnold, and then the bigger basket was for Robert and Mark. <laughs> so uh, we graduated from one basket to the other, and it was. Even our basketballs, Henry T. People don't understand the basketball, the orange basketballs that were not tight, during our time. Um, they would, we would use them so much until they were so smooth that they'd start cracking and then the, the interior rubber part would start coming out and then we would tape it with duct tape and, or wire and here we'd go again. And that's what we had, Coach. That's what we had. A bike, a tricycle. My mother bought, a, bought one tricycle for my oldest brother and went through everybody. By the time we had it, it, it we just used the, the handlebars were broken and everything. That's what we used. You know, it, it just, and I tell my wife, we have forgotten everything that made us who we are today. And you know, uh, 
It's okay to go without something. As long as you have God and a family, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. Wow. And through all that, I got the passion and the love of the game. My father always used to say, how could there? I, how could I have ever imagined that a guy from Coyote would be playing, coaching the Sun Devils or win a state championship? It was an awesome, awesome feeling. He got to witness on the first row in the pit in 2011 when you guys beat Roswell for the state championship. What did that mean to him as he ran out there on the court? Oh, my God. With all the other thousands of people rushing the court, you found your dad. What did he say to you at, oh. that, at that special okay, moment? Oh, uh, let me take it back. My father was 90, about 90 years old at that time. 90 years old. I have a picture of it when he was in the court. And the thing is that it, my, my, my older brother, my younger brother Arnold was sitting next to him because he, you know, he was always watching over him and he was in the chair backs where uh, those soft chair backs on the back and, and uh, my father goes, uh, Anda. And then after we won the state championship, okay, the ball goes to the net, we win it, everybody's jumping. And my father tells my brother, Anda, Anda. And, he goes, and my brother freaks out, what, what, what's going on, Dad? No, take me down there. Take me down there. So there's about four or five steps to the, and here we take him down there with a little cowboy hat and my, my brother's trying to shield him, you know, because there's so much action going on. But when he reaches me, you know, it's, I give my father a hug and I, and I told him that I loved him and he told me, hey, what a wonderful moment. I congratulate you. Que el en momento español, tan, por favor. Que momento tan profundo. Gracias a Dios. And then he always used to say, may God bless you. Que Dios te bendiga. He always used to say, well, and to have him along with my other three brothers, what a feeling, coach. And then he also had his grandson there. So it was, a, for his was the kingdom of heaven. And, and, you know, I never could describe, when people ask me, what's the feeling of winning a state championship? Words can't describe it. But if the kingdom of heaven is like that, I want to go there. Wow. I want to go there. Stay right there. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you this is going to be special. I mean, very special inspiration. Coach Martinez is going to share with us the excitement of a few days ago in the famous pit when they defeated an outstanding team from Capitol High School in Santa Fe. Wow, what a thriller. My heart is still pounding hard. But Coach Martinez is going to explain how it got done when we come back. Stay right there. This is Be Inspired with Henry T on KZQ Channel 32. We'll be right back. Funding for today's programming has been brought to you in part by Malloy Dodge, Albuquerque's new and used Dodge and Ram truck dealer since 1955. I'm Nick Malloy from Malloy Dodge. For four generations, we've been serving thousands of New Mexicans from all across our fine state. Over 65 years of trust. Our family serving yours. Malloy Dodge, we're proud to stand behind our community. Thank you for supporting family programming. This program has been sponsored in part by Butterfield Jewelers, located at 2411 San Pedro Northeast, offering appraisals, handcrafted jewelry, gold and jewelry buying, and jewelry and watch repair. Butterfield Jewelry is owned and operated by Mike, Teresa, and Bernie Butterfield. Butterfield Jewelry, 505-884-5747. Welcome back, I'm Henry T, and welcome to the show that inspires the whole state. Million people to watch this TV station every day throughout New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, and a little bit of Texas. And today, we've got them running in place in shadow boxing because Coach Martinez has lifted up the level of inspiration everywhere. <coughs> you have that way about you. Your kids tell me, man, he fires us up, Henry T. What do they mean? How do you literally 
fire up your kids. <laughs> because when they leave your locker room, man, there's some magic that happens with your words to their heart. And they sprint out to the court, and they're ready to go to battle for you, Coach. What do you say? How do you literally inspire? I think the first few words, uh, Henry, I, I try to re calm him down a little bit, tell him about the importance of the game and what it's going to take to win, and then uh, you kind of pump him up a little bit and let him get that energy, get him the taste of what it feels like, move the moment forward and say, in a couple hours, we want to win the game, move the moment back if we lose it. But I'll tell you, uh, once we come out of there, I think the final thing is our prayer, when it brings us together and standing as one and then uh, sending him out there and we're ready. And that energy starts rising and we hit that floor, we're ready to go. I think the biggest thing for us is that uh, I think we're a very well-prepared team. I think that's what really pumps us up and I think they're ready to go. And then on top of that, who's not going to get pumped up, surrounded by thousands of Espanola fans? I mean, can you imagine? My goodness. Yes. Stop right there. There were 15,000 fans in the pit on championship day. The Lobos never got 15,000 this year. The, the noise level in the pit is something we haven't heard in the pit since they had 18,000 fans in the pit. You were breaking records left and right. I mean, what a feeling in that awesome building that you call now your second home. It's magical. The pit is magical. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, we've been fortunate the first time around. We, we sold it out three times, and this time we sold it out the last day. There wasn't any tickets left. But uh, it's a feeling. Uh, a while ago, just before we broke, I, I said that I couldn't describe, words couldn't, can't describe it, and they can't. And, and about, the, about the beauty of it is uh, the most important thing, and, and the thing that we'll always remember is that I think that the words that I said before, it's the closest thing to being in heaven. Because the joy, and then the people from the laughter, the unity, everything that God would want, it's there. Everybody, for one moment, everybody's in silence. With three minutes left, Henry, you couldn't hear a pin drop, and there was 15,000 fans in there. Why? Because everybody's eyes was focused on that game. There was a pause and a silence, and I heard it down there that there was, I could hear there was nothing, because everybody was like, it went down to the wire. And Capital had a great, great team there, very well coached, very disciplined, a very smart team, defensively tough, and I knew what we were up against. But it took 32 minutes for us to battle, and it was within, I think the last 11 seconds is when we took the lead. For good, but I'll tell you, it was a phenomenal game. What, what, what energy, what excitement, uh, what a show we put on, on both parts, both teams, Capital and ourselves. Great job. You had a game plan, and you executed the game plan. But the intangibles are steals and mistakes because two great teams played against each other are going to force turnovers. And you're not going to get that tailor-made shot. Someone's going to have a a hand in your face. It's obstacles everywhere. And then, who's going to break down their composure first? And the defensive plans, your strategy defensively was, was masterful. It was ingenious, as a lot of people have printed in the newspaper. But we'll go there later. But the composure level of your kids, playing with all your might, but at the same time playing with composure, that's special. Tell me about no that. No doubt. You know, when we, when we were going to meet up with, with Capital, there was two things we were going after. Number one is we knew Ben Gomez was a fantastic coach. He's always proven that when he played. That's ace. Number two, Coca. How do we contain Coca? And number three, their defense is phenomenal. And on transition, they're capable of blowing any team out. So they, as they had proved before with, with Grants, uh, Grants had ran all year, and they ran Grants, and they beat Grants. So now he put us in another position saying, okay, what do we do? The big, the stronger, I said to myself, okay, we have an advantage. We have the advantage of our two bigs, and we have the advantage of Flores and our guard play. So the advantage with our guard play was that Flores was probably, had never placed Flores on, on Coca. I had always played uh, one of my other players on him, and this time I elected to go with, with uh, uh, Marcos Flores on him and to contain him, and then I went to a box instead of a, a triangle, and uh, 
we went out there. The other thing is we wanted to hold composure. We wanted to stay close, Henry. We said we, we got to stay close to catch these guys. But within all these intangibles, like you stay, stated, we couldn't give him rebounds. We all rebounded him. We had to hit free throws. I think we were pretty, they missed some, we missed some. But that's expected. Those are variables that are not guaranteed. You know, those are variables that are going to go back and forth. And then the thing is, we had to make sure that we were close at the end. And the other thing is that we had to stay composed to the very end. And the last thing, we had to have luck. Because at the state tournament, all teams are so great, but you need a little bit of luck. And I'll be darned that the way it, tra- it, it went with 35 seconds or 36, they were up five. And we'll catch them 22, we're down three. 11, we're down one. Seven, we're up one. So everything went our direction. He, they had a timeout. We didn't have any more time. I called my last timeout. And I think a critical thing was one of my brothers said when we, it was 11 seconds left. There was three, uh, three points. They were up three points or 22 seconds. And we had to make a decision. Do we go with the two or the three? And he said, go for the two. And I'll tell you, we hooked Marcus and Marcus went right to the paint and scored. They didn't contest it because sure they weren't going to contest it because they're still going to be up by one. Cut the ball and lost it. And we applied enough pressure where they coughed it up and uh, I think we made some very good decisions and on the straightaway we stopped and we didn't let Coca get the ball because he's a very dangerous player. And even with that, they got the ball and and uh, Laranel went up the court and, and James was able to take the charge and it was, it was a critical call. But as I look back on the tape, it was the right call. Wow. And it was just, from that point on, it was pandemonium. But never, Henry, did I ever feel like... Uh, like uh, uh, impending doom. Never did I feel like that. I always felt I had faith. And then with about three minutes left, I walked away from my team and I grabbed my cross and I said a prayer. And I put it in his hands. Wow. You know, but it was, and the thing is, Henry, at the the beginning of the game, uh, God's not going to favor one team or the other. He's just not going to do that. But one of the things that we did say, may the better team win. And we did say, if we win this game, we claim it for the kingdom of heaven. And I think that that's what put the closure to it. But when the game ended, the first person I wanted to hug, and I'll be honest, uh, besides my players, and it was my wife. I ran to find her because she's always telling me that she always leaves me behind. But yes, lo and behold, she was in the middle of the court. <laughs> so it worked out great. I took a picture of that. And I also took a picture of the celebration. And you're running around like Jim Valvano looking for somebody to hug. And you're hugging everybody. They were looking for you. So many hugs. Yes. It was a world series of hugs at the end. What a celebration. And, and I tell you, like a lot of people nowadays, they, they want to be too professional. It's okay to show your emotions. But parents always taught me that, you know. And uh, I, You just can't describe it. I, there's so much joy that comes over you. There's so much energy. There's, there's happiness. There's, it's, it's an unbelievable feeling. You want to grab everybody, hug them, and, and you tell them, I love you guys, thank you, I'm kissing my players. Even Coca, I saw Coca, man, my heart went out to him, to Ben Gomez. Ben Gomez is a phenomenal coach. He had put a great team out there this year, a, a fantastic team. They were just amazing. But somebody's got to win and somebody's got to lose. Wow. And, you know, it just, it just turned out that we were able to win it this year. But all in all, uh, what, a, what an amazing feeling. It's magical in that pit, Coach. It's just magic. We're going to put on right now natural sound. And we'll watch together. The f- we'll put on a minute. How's that? Of the final seconds of that thrilling win, Española over Capital on champ- championship afternoon. Watch this.
those visuals will be implanted in my brain, in my heart, more importantly, forever. That's what youth basketball is all about. And in the famous pit on championship day. And every time I go to Espanol, New Mexico, man, I got to get, I got to hire a cardiologist to walk in that town because <laughs> everything's so exciting there. <laughs> wow. Whoa. What does it mean to wake up and your kids, especially to wake up as state champions? Kids all over the state want that feeling. I'll never get it. Some will never get it out there. Most of us will never experience that. What's the experience like? The feeling? You know, uh, Henry, uh, they're going to get up every day from this day forth till the day they leave this world. And I'll tell you one thing that they'll always feel, wow, did, was it a dream? Was it like, did it happen? But it happened. And the thing is that it always gives you like, it's, there's always a magic to it, you know? Even when they talk to their kids, when they talk to their family, when, brothers, friends, it's going to be something magical. And when you wake up, you'll ask yourself, did it really happen? And you'll even ask yourself that 10 years, because I still can't believe things that we've done or I've done in my, in my career. And it, you just say to yourself, wow, it's just amazing. On the way back home from the hotel on Sunday morning, I have breakfast with you, you get in the bus, you travel back to Española, you have a long convoy or caravan, whatever it's called, behind you already, then you got to Nav or Buffalo Thunder, and then thousands more cars got into the caravan, <laughs> the state police escort, fire engines, unbelievable parade in town, and then you get to the gym and Half the gym is there waiting for you, packed with fans. Wow! What an amazing feeling. Unbelievable. And a documentary, ladies and gentlemen, on this great town, on the basketball program, on, the, on these incredible people, is coming soon. Good Martinez, what a God pleasure. Bless you. Thank God you. God bless you. Thank you. Wow. Woo! That's inspiration, ladies and gentlemen. And you lived it right here on a very special television station, KZQ, Channel 32. If you've got a story, don't forget to call me with it, 907-4523, or email originalgameface at gmail.com. It's been great talking with you today, right here on KZQ. Remember, we're on every morning right here be inspired with Henry T, 8 o'clock on KZQ, Channel 32.